On today's show, uh-oh, the driving range of the Chevy Bolt EV could drop dramatically over time. Scania tests wireless charging with buses, and we'll show you which automakers spend the most money on research. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. All of us with smartphones and laptops know that the batteries degrade over time. And the same is true for electric vehicles. Just ask some Nissan Leaf and Tesla owners. To make sure that owners are aware of this issue, Chevrolet put a note in the owner's manual of the new Bolt EV that says the battery could lose 10% to 40% of its capacity over the eight-year warranty of the car. That 40% would bring the EV's range down from 238 miles to only 143. Of course, it all depends on how hard you are on the battery, and it is the most extreme case, but that's still a huge reduction. And imagine if you live in a place where it gets really cold. Low temperatures can reduce that range by another 40%, and that would bring the range down to about 86 miles. Wireless charging is nothing new. Many smartphones and battery-powered devices can be powered up this way. The auto industry is already adapting the technology for vehicles. For example, General Motors offers a wireless charging mat for phones in some of its vehicles, and automakers and suppliers are developing EVs that can be charged wirelessly. And now, commercial truck and bus maker Scania is doing the same for that side of the market. But instead of charging the vehicle while it is not being used, Scania is testing charging buses when they're at a stop. So when the bus stops to pick up passengers, it parks over a charging surface located under the road, and it starts charging automatically. The tests are being done in Sweden with a diesel hybrid bus. The company says seven minutes of wireless inductive charging is enough to power the bus for its 10-kilometer route. Still to come, we'll take a look at which automakers invest the most on research and development. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. You might have heard about FCA's issues with some of its electronic shifters, so Ford is looking to avoid those problems. All 2017 Fusions now come standard with a rotary shift dial, and to reduce the chance of a rollaway, they have an automatic return to park feature. The system monitors data from sensors that watch the transmission, the shifter, the driver's door, and seat belt to determine if the driver is getting out of the car. If it thinks so and the car is not in park, the shifter automatically rotates itself back to P. This is the same system that will not let you shift into reverse when you're driving over five miles an hour, but it was just adapted for this new use, which should help reduce injuries and maybe save a life. The auto industry spends over $100 billion on research and development every year, but do you know which automakers invest the most in R&D? You don't? Well, you're in for luck, because we poured through the OEM's annual reports to find out. Volkswagen is by far and away the leader. In 2015, the company spent $13.1 billion on R&D. But it will be interesting to see what the impact of the diesel scandal is going to have. Our guess is that number will drop. Way behind VW is Toyota, which spent close to $9 billion. And not surprisingly, General Motors is third at $7.5 billion. But looky here, at number four on the list is Daimler, just behind the top three automakers in the world. And rounding out the top five is Ford, which spent $6.7 billion. We don't want to bore you with a whole bunch of numbers, so if you want to see where the other top manufacturers rank, just look for the full list in today's transcript. If you're watching on YouTube, just look for the link to the transcript in the description box. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. 
take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. And now it's time for some of your feedback. You know, we're so grateful for all the congratulations that poured in as we celebrated AutoLine Daily number 2000. 2000 of anything is a lot. Mark summed it up nicely by saying, Congratulations on episode 2000. I love your program and watch it every day. Keep up the good work. I love what Landon Thomas had to say. I hate it when you guys go on hiatus. I rely on you guys for pretty much everything I know. Great comment. There were so many of you who wrote in. We've got to thank you. JWH, Barry Rector, Wine Geek, George, Lex, G.A. Brannigan, Buzzard, John M., Gary Susie, Roger Blows, GM Veteran, Kit Gerhardt, Gene E., Tuck and Roll, Marshy, Merv, Rick W., Landon Thomas, Mick Wind, Steve Mar Carmichael, Fred Perkins, Love Jazz, Knucklebuck, John D. Liberto, Mark K., Hellodlo, Gurkirat Sidhu, O'Connor993, Citro Nord. Look, the list just goes on and on. So thank you to everyone. Okay, now back to your questions. Don B. wants to know, when inventories go unsold, what really happens to the vehicles? We all heard stories of them being crushed after a few years or being shipped to other countries and being sold. Look, here's the true story. Every car that gets made gets sold. They don't disassemble them and send the parts back to the suppliers. And the longer they go unsold, the more the price goes down. Some of those dogs out there may take a year or two to get sold, but they all get sold. Roger T. heard our report that sales did not set a new record like most people reported in November. We showed you that on a daily selling rate basis, sales actually fell more than 4%. Roger says, elections impacted car sales in November. No one went out to buy that week. That explains the daily dip. And you know, you could be right. I think Hillary supporters are so depressed that the last thing they felt like doing was going out and buying a shiny new car. But I think, really, the main reason is that car sales are slowing down. As we also pointed out, the slowdown is now a three-month trend, not something that only happened in November. Lex says, It is hard to believe that GM is losing 9 k for every bolt manufactured. Does that number factor in the EV credits that GM receives? No, it does not. And remember, under the current ZEV mandate, GM would not be able to sell conventional vehicles where it does make good money unless it sold electric vehicles. That 9K number relates to the manufacturing cost, though some people dispute that number. They think it's way too high. Marshall wants to know, why 9 and 10 speed transmissions? Just a couple of years ago, we heard from the experts in the automotive magazines that transmissions with more than 8 gears made no sense for consumer or passenger vehicles. Well, I think the difference is that we're now seeing much smaller displacement engines going into cars. I mean, whoever thought you'd see Cadillac's biggest sedan offered with a two-liter four-cylinder engine? Yeah, I know it's a boosted engine, but still, more gears make those little engines perform a lot better. And finally, G.A. Brannigan saw our report on the air quality index of several major cities. He says, I don't care what anybody says. The city pollution numbers speak for themselves. The USA has done an outstanding job in reducing air pollution. LA at 65 and Detroit at 27? This is good. You're right, GA. Sometimes we forget that we've made amazing progress on the environment. We still have a ways to go, but probably all of you watching right now have never breathed air as clean as you're breathing right now. Hey, thanks for all your questions and comments and for your kind words on our 2000th birthday. And don't forget, later today we're going to have AutoLine After Hours, one of the best shows of giving you insight into the global automotive industry. But with that, we wrap up today's report. Please join us again tomorrow.